Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. From New York, Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake Flour. Today presents a surprise star in Grand Central Station. All aboard for better baking, lighter cake. You're on the right track. Pillsbury Snow Sheen Cake Flour. As the bullet seeks its target, shining rails in every part of our great country are aimed at Grand Central Station, part of the nation's greatest city. Drawn by the magnetic force of the fantastic metropolis, day and night, great trains rush toward the Hudson River, sweep down its eastern bank for 140 miles. Flash briefly by the long red row of tenement houses south of 125th Street. Dive with a roar into the going on that wild tunnel which burrows beneath the river and the flank of Park Avenue. And then... Grand Central Station. Crossroads of a million private lives. Gigantic stage on which are played a thousand dramas daily. <laughs> This is the tender, heartwarming story of Willie Madison. The boy they always said was too young to understand. But Willie will surprise you, proving how little we really know of what goes on in the mind of a child. And now, since this is Willie's story, here he is to tell it. Hello, I'm Willie. Our place is the first one on the left, after you cross the railroad track. The white one with the red barn. I guess you'd think our house is kind of small, but so's our family. Just Pop, Mom, Joey, and me. Joey is older, but I'm going on 13. Well, you'd never know it from the way they treat me. Always acting like I was just a baby. For instance, I come into the parlor where Mom and Pop are talking, and as soon as they see me, they quit. And Mom says, run along, Willie. Your father and I are discussing something. Oh, that's all right. I like to hear you when you're... Do as you're told, son. You wouldn't understand anyway. You're too young. Huh, too young. I understood a whole lot more than they thought. I knew the winter had been bad for us. First, it was the two heifers dying. That only left my own Jersey heifer, the one I was raising for the 4-H prize. Then half of Mom's laying hens died from the roof. On top of that, two haystacks in the feedlot burned up the night of that lightning storm. Well, I can tell you I was pretty worried. So I was sure glad that day when I heard Pop say... Well, Annie, I finally heard a robin this morning. You did? Then winter's over, I guess. Yeah, I sure hope it means our hard luck's over, too. If what feed we've got will last till grass comes, maybe we can get by. I just can't ask for any more credits at the store. Well, we've got the strawberries, Jim. They'll be coming in in May and June. I'm counting on the berries, bringing in four or five hundred dollars. But we're going to need four hundred and fifty on July 1st to pay on the tractor and the power saw. Oh, I was hoping we could get Joe a new suit for the high school graduation. He just can't stand up on that platform in his shiny old serge with the sleeves halfway up to his elbows. And what will he wear to Eve Fortney's party? All the rest of his class are probably going to be dressed up in new clothes. Gosh, I felt terrible about Joe. 
And next day at school, I got bawled out plenty on account of I wasn't paying attention. I just couldn't keep my mind on anything except trying to think of some way to help him. When I got home from school, Mom was upstairs cleaning, and Pop wasn't around, probably over in the south pasture. Well, I got out the Sears Robot catalog, and on page 142, there was a picture of a swell-looking suit. 100% all-wool fraternity prep student suit. Snappy diagonal weave with subdued over plaid. Trousers with pleat shipping weight 3 pounds 12 ounces. Number 060D2707, medium blue. 2150. Gee, with a parcel post, that'd be near $22. Gosh, where could I ever get that much before June 1st? Uh-oh, Mom's coming downstairs. I know it'll make her feel bad to catch me looking at the suits in the catalog. So I sneak out on the side porch and start whittling a stick for a bean shooter. That you, Jim? Yes, Annie. Oh, come here. I I want to show you something. Oh, Rosie, I forgot and left the catalog on the table. What's the matter, Annie? What's wrong? Look, Jim, I I found the Sears robot catalog open just like it is. Mm. Joe must have been looking at this suit here. Yeah. Nice one, all right. One pants suit, 2150. Two pants suit, 2695. Mm. Well, I sure wish we could get it for him, but even that 2150 might as well be a thousand dollars. Oh, there, there must be some way. Joe's a good boy. I, I'm going to pray for that suit, Jim. tough to raise a family on very little money. As far as feeding them, I can tell you how you can make something awful good and don't cost much. How do you think that family of yours would go for a great big cake dripping with icing, huh? to the village that night, and Mom and Pop came up to bed about 10.30. I was still awake thinking. Next day was Saturday. No school. So I was figuring how I'd try to get some work over at Fort Lee's Big Farm. I heard the clock strike one and heard just about dozing off when a car come into our lane. Sounded like Joe talking to someone. So I got out of bed and went over to the window. Gee, Eddie, you know I'd like to get in on it. I sure need Joe bad. No but... buts about it. It's a cinch. Can't miss. Fred and I can raise 30 or 40 bucks between us. So if you can dig up 15 or 20, we'll be all set. Gee, 20 bucks. Well, I don't know. You say it's a sure thing, Eddie? I tell you, that dough is already burning a hole in my pocket. <laughs> and we ain't even got it yet. Of course, we have to let that smart Alec win at first. That's what the 60 bucks is for. But Fred's a demon at switching. He must have been born with dice in his hand. And we cut you in for a third of everything we make. Gee, I don't know, Eddie. It sounds all right, but... Well, I'll see what I can do. See, it's school Monday, Joe. Don't forget the 20 bucks. I'll remember. So long, Eddie. So long. I just got back to bed in time. Joe came in and started to undress in the dark. He spoke Hi. to me. You awake? But I let on like I was sound asleep. Why, yes, Willie. With help as scarce as it is this spring, I'm sure I can use you. Gee, that's fine, Mr. Forney. I'm glad. How would you like to start right here in the barn? Yes, sir. Anything you say. I'm going to try raising broilers in the air. That new battery system. Oh. So what I want you to do first is sweep the floor very clean, then wipe down the walls and spray them with whitewash. Think you can do that? Yes, sir. Sure, Mr. Forney. 
be in Saturday. I'll work all day today. But uh, could I come after school on weekdays, too? Glad to have you. Now, I pay 50 cents an hour. Daddy, you want it on the telephone. Oh, all right, Eve. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, Willie, uh, I'll help you get started. <laughs> have you been all day? I've been working for Mr. Fortney. Look, here's four bucks. But that's wonderful, son. Now you can get yourself a pair of shoes right away. Even the other Hi, Mom, the... I'm going to work at Fortney's every day after school, too. Oh. So I'll have plenty for shoes later on. Um, I, uh, I thought maybe there might be something special this money could go towards, couldn't it? Bless you, son. There is something special and... God will bless you for the thought. Should I put the money in the old coffee can, Mom? Yes, dear. Then after supper, I want you to take that set in the turkey eggs over to the med camp. What? You collect two dollars for them. You're going to sell the turkey eggs? Mm-hmm. Then we won't have no turkey for Thanksgiving. That's so. But maybe the two dollars will help us get something we'll be more thankful for than turkey. Sure. I like chicken better anyway. <laughs> and you know what? I can work three hours after school every day for Mr. Fortney and all day Saturday. My. That'll mean let's see now. Three hours times five days is fifteen hours, and eight hours Saturday is twenty three times fifty cents. Well, gee, that'll be eleven fifty by next Saturday night. Oh, won't that be wonderful? Eleven fifty and this four I got is fifteen fifty plus this two bucks for the eggs. Mm-hmm. Uh, gee, Mom, then we only need Oh gee. What were you going to say, Willie? Only need what? Well, well, I was just thinking how fast it saves up. You know, if we all, well... Yes, son. I know what you mean. When families work for one another like we're doing, God works with them and... Oh, and... Mom, you're crying. It's nothing, Willie, dear. I... You wouldn't understand. Fortney sure is a nice man. When Saturday came around, Eve wanted me to go to the village to get some things. So Mr. Fortney paid me for the whole day, and he let me quit at noon. Eleven and a half dollars more I had for the old coffee can. Willie, here's a list of things I wish you'd get. You'll find them all at the hub, so just charge them to our account. Sure, Eve. And you can take the jeep if you promise to be careful. Oh, gee, thanks. Uh Uh-oh, could I drive home first before I go to the village? Of course, there's no hurry. Thanks again, Eve. It won't take long. I just want to give Mom something. Okay, Willie. You're a good kid. Now, don't drive too fast. When I got home, Mom was down feeding her May chicks. So I went out to the kitchen and took down the old coffee can. And I jumped out all the money and added my eleven fifty to it. Let's see, four, five, six, ten, fifteen, seventeen, seventeen fifty. Only about four and a quarter more will be enough to cover the parcel post and everything for Joe's suit. I put the money back and was just putting the can back up on the shelf when Joe came in. Hey, Willie, what are you doing? Just putting away the money I made. Money? Shh, a secret. I think you're in for a swell surprise. Huh? New suit. Oh. Mom's saving up for it. Oh, so Mom's saving up for something for me, huh? Uh-huh. Well, where are you going with the Fortney's Jeep? Into town to get some things for you. Want to come along? Yeah, I was going in later anyway, so I might as well go with you. Go on out and get her started. I'll be right with you. Okay, but make it snappy. Here. Come on, come on. I didn't take very long, Willie. Let's go. What are you going into town for, Joe? Oh, nothing special. I got a date with Eddie. That's all. After I dropped Joe off, I got the things for Eve and started for the Fortney. But something kept running through my head. Joe was meeting Eddie. And I kept thinking of what I heard him say the night Joe got home so late. The sense, Joe. Can't miss. Fred and I can raise 30 or 40 bucks between us. So if you could dig up 15 or 20, we'd be all set. 
Something told me to go home first before I delivered the things to Eve. And I got there and took the can off the shelf. I didn't even have to open it to know that it was empty. Well, it kind of looks like Joe's starting off making a big mistake. morning, I didn't wait till the sun came streaming in the window. The birds were singing. I could see a few little white clouds floating along, pink and gold on the bottom, and white on top like... And all of a sudden, I remembered. The sunshine and the clouds and the birds all went bluey. Joe wasn't in bed, and his pillow hadn't been slept on. I got up and sneaked downstairs, because Mom and Pop always sleep late on Sunday. I was going to get myself some breakfast... My eyes lit on a coffee can on the shelf, and I lost my appetite. I went out and fed the chickens and milk, then I turned the horse and the cows out into the pasture. I always brushed my jersey heifer every morning so her hide would be in good shape when it come time to show her for the 4-H prize. So oh, this morning, I, I just didn't have a heart to do it. All I could think of was Joe and the coffee can and how poor Mom was going to feel when she found out. Gosh, if there's only some way I could keep it from... Hey, hey, that's the heifer, that's it. I just know Mr. Fulton will buy her for seventeen fifty. That you, Willie? Yeah, Mom. My goodness, you must have got up with the sun this morning. <laughs> Done all your chores? Had your breakfast? I wasn't hungry when I got up, Pop, but I did the chores, and I'm sure hungry now. Well, sit right down, and I'll dish up some eggs and fried mush. Better call Joe down first, Willie. Joe? Ah. Uh... Oh, yeah. Well, you, you see, uh, Joe didn't come home last night. What? Joe didn't come home? Oh, yeah. I, I, I forgot to tell you. He um, he, he asked me to tell you he was going to spend the night with uh, Eddie. Well, how did you happen to forget, Willie? I told you and told you to tie a string around Now, you. now, Jim. Joe should have said something about it to me himself. Now, here's your eggs, Willie. Oh, thanks, Mom. I don't favor his being with that Eddie. Oh. That boy's got a bad streak in him. Sure as skunks hate green apples. Well, we don't have to worry about our Joe. He's a good boy. Yes. Yes, he is. God bless him. I'm so glad we're going to be able to get him up. <laughs> uh, uh, Willie. Are you get yours, Mom? I washed and pressed your brown slack. You better put him on for church this morning. My friends, for the text of today's sermon, I have taken verse 15 of the 91st Psalm. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Friends, think of the tremendous import of that verse. It's solace and comfort. It makes to you a promise by the one omnipotent power which does not fail, will not fail. All the way home from church, I kept thinking of that son. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Gosh, God said that and... Well, there was trouble, sure enough. So I made up my mind I was going to try what the minister said. I just had to get the money back in the coffee can before Mom looked there for us. So, and I got to the barn, I climbed up into the hayloft where nobody could see me. Then I kneeled down. Dear God, the minister said you'd answer that you'd be with me in trouble. Please, please keep Joe safe and help me to get him out of his trouble. And I'll never ask you for anything else. So help me. Amen. Why, Willie. Hello, Eve. What are you doing over here on Sunday? And what's that happening? 
supper. I came to see your father. Well, he's in the rock garden down by the spring house. Thanks, Eve. Come on, Bessie. Hey, wait, Willie. Did you hear about Eddie? Eddie? No. What happened to him? Well, he and some fellow named Fred were arrested last night. Arrested? For, for what? They were caught gambling and with crooked dice. Eddie and just the two of them? That's what Constable Lovson told Daddy. Imagine cheating with crooked dice. I got away from Eve as quick as I could. I didn't want her to see how worried I was. Oh, at least Joe wasn't arrested. But where was he? Maybe, maybe he'd run away. Maybe... No. I asked God to help me. And the minister says he always does. Just then, as we came around the bend in the road by the rock garden, Bessie, Bessie let out a big moo. Mr. Fortney looked up surprised. Why, hello there. Hello, Mr. Fortney. Can I talk to you, please? I came over to see you about something. And you brought along your prize heifer, eh? Say. Bessie. She's a beauty. I've seen most of the other entries around here, and you ought to win hands down, Willie. Yes, sir, but I... Well, I, I brought her over hoping you might buy her. Me? Buy her? Yes, sir. I'll sell her for $21.77. <laughs> Well, that certainly is an odd price. And a bargain for that heifer. But you know, I'm getting out of the dairy business, Willie. I'm getting rid of stock, not buying it. Uh, I, I see, sir. Well, I guess I'd better just take her back home. The plan's just the same. Come on. Come on, Ben. Oh, uh, just a minute, Willie. Uh, sit down. We'll talk this over. Oh, thanks. I know the work and the care you put in on this animal and how much you want to win that $500 prize. Yes, sir, I sure did. Did? That's the past tense, ain't it? Uh, why, what's the trouble, Willie? It, it's all trouble. That's why I just got to have $21.77 right away. Or, well, at least seventeen fifty. Hmm. Yeah, you want to tell me about it? Uh-huh. Last winter was awful bad for us. Mom and Pop, well, they wouldn't say anything, but things were worse for us than anybody around here knows about. That's all right. That's how it is, Mr. Fortin. The t- 27 cents is for parcel post, and the suit is 21 dollars and a half, and when Mom finds out... Uh, Willie, uh, tell you what I'll do. I'm going into partnership with you on this heifer. Uh-huh. I'll give you $25 right now for, uh, for a 5% interest in the prize money. How's that? You, you will, Mr. Fortney? And you mean I can keep the heifer? Uh-huh. That's the deal. Huh. Now, here. Here's your $25. Thank uh, you. Now, run home and get it into that coffee can quick so your mother never knows. was right. God does answer. I felt like I ought to go right back up there in the hayloft and thank him. So as soon as I put the heifer in her stall, I climbed up into the hayloft. Is that you, Willie? Joe, where are you been? Well, I've been up here all night. I heard you praying for me before, kid, but it won't do any good. I'm in a pick of oh, trouble. No. I'm running away as soon as it starts. Oh, no, Joe, you don't have to know. You ain't in trouble anymore. Yes, I am, Willie. They arrested Eddie and Fred. Oh. I wasn't in the game. I just gave Eddie the money. Oh. I was going to put it right back in the coffee can with some of the winnings. But it's gone now. Oh. I just can't face Mom and yes, Pop. Yes, yes, you can, Joe. You can. God answered the prayer. He took care of you. Look. Twenty-five bucks. Twenty-five dollars. It's going right into the old coffee can before Mom finds out. Mom knows already. Oh, you sure? Yes. I saw her from the hayloft door. I peeked out and she was sitting by the kitchen window with the can in her lap, crying. Oh, gee. Oh, poor Ma. She was saving that money to get you a suit from Sears Roebox. Wait. Wait, I got an idea. Come on, Joe. We're going to the house. 
Hiya, Mom. I just ran into Joey. Joey. Oh, we've been so worried about you. Oh, I'm okay, Mom. Oh, you must be hungry. You go wash up, and by the time you're back downstairs, I'll have something warmed up for you. Oh, swell, Mom. I'm starved. Hey, Mom. Huh? I got another seven fifty for some work I'm going to do. Oh. So I took the money out of the can, and Mr. Fortney changed it all to paper money for me. Here. Twenty-five dollars even. Oh, Willie. Willie, then... Then Joe didn't... Oh, thank God. Gee, Mom, what are you crying for now? Oh, God bless you, son. It, it, it's something that you wouldn't understand. was a beautiful performance, and I know you're all anxious to learn the names of the Broadway players presented by Pillsbury in today's Grand Central Station drama. I'll give you the complete cast in just a moment. Well, our story goes to show that sometimes faith really does move mountains. You know, I hope this weekend you'll get around to using Pillsbury snow sheen cake flour. Bake the family a nice big cake. It won't take long with snow sheen. Snow sheen cakes are quick to mix, they're quick to make, and they're quick to get compliments. You'll probably go shopping this afternoon, so just jot down Pillsbury snow sheen cake flour on that uh, things I must buy list. And until next week, whenever you hear a train whistle, don't forget Pillsbury and Grand Central Station. And now our cast. Today's Grand Central Station drama, Too Young to Understand, was written by Harold Park Godwin. And in the leading role of the young boy, Willie, was our surprise star, Sarah Fussell, a talented young lady who plays little boys more realistically than they can themselves. Mom was played by Charmé Allen, Pop by Will Gear, Mrs. Fortney by Howard Smith, Eve by Bessa Leslie, Joe by Jackie Ayers, and Eddie by Kenneth Ford. We leave Pillsbury's Grand Central Station until next week at this same time. Listen for the train whistle and hear the remarkable story of Myron Sully, Betrayed when he let someone else think for him. Doomed when he started to think for himself. Our star is your favorite and ours, Mason Adams of Stage and Radio. You'll also hear players from Mark Connolly's new play, A Story for Strangers, and from Gentlemen from Athens and others. So join us next week and every week for a new play with a completely new top-flight cast from the Broadway theater. Until then, this is Ken Roberts, your Grand Central Station narrator saying goodbye and better baking for Pillsbury, greatest name in flour. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.